I have a question. Kids and sports coming up next. Hey, my, my pen is not a drumstick oh, there, right? Coach? <laughs> Careful of that. It is a nice pen. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Coach Mike here, Kids and Sports on the Rant Radio Network. I got my co-host, Alex Alanese. Hello, Alex. Good morning, sir. You're, 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 well, I already told you the Dallas jokes. Oh, the there right away, you're going with the, with the punches, man, <laughs> I'll just, tell you. It's so wide open there. And you're in trouble this next week. You got Denver coming. Hey, you know what? The, I'll, I'll be honest with you. There was a little scare there for a little while that uh, Dallas might win. <laughs> I was scared. It, well, all the people on Facebook, they stopped uh, bagging on me. Oh, okay. All right. For about two quarters, I would say. I, I have a feeling you'll get to the playoffs. I don't know. Oh, no. You'll get to the playoffs. No. After that, I don't know. No, they're too hot and cold. I think they're going to finish 8-8. Eight and eight, and okay. That's, yeah, that, that's my prediction. Well, we're going to talk about something before you get to the pros. We're going to be talking today about yelling at the kids again, We like we did last week. Uh, first, you got your homework to do, 20 crunches, and check out the website, www.kidsandsports.com. That's K-I-D-Z. And is a nancysports.com. My email, actually, I got two now, although I still got to figure out how to get into the other one. Coach Mike at kidsandsports.com, or we have now have Coach Mike at the Rant Radio Network.com. So I got to I got to work on that one, but I think that'll get you to us quicker. I got I'm learning more. Coach has to keep learning. All you coaches out there, never stop learning. No, so I didn't hit your pen there. I didn't, yeah, yeah, I appreciate I'm that. I'm just pointing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we got a good guest today. Let's see if we can get our guest on the line. You got to push the button there, I think. We had a lot of problems. VJ, are you there? I'm here, Mike. All right. We got VJ Stanley, author of Stop the Tsunami in Youth Sports. Last week, we started a discussion about coaches yelling at the kids. And I primarily, this, even though this is an ongoing topic, I primarily brought it up last week because he, VJ's email newsletter that he sent out, he was talking about a story uh, at, a, at a six-year-old. Was it a football game, or what kind of game was that, VJ? Tell us the story. Well, um, a television station wanted to do a uh, feature on, on Frozen Shorts and what we were doing, and uh, they asked us to come out to a Pop Warner flag uh, Excuse me, it's full contact now for that age, for six-year-olds. And I got out there, we did the piece, and we were on one field, and the lady went over uh, who was uh, filming me and taping and doing everything, and she went over to another field, and uh, she came back over to me, and she said, uh, as I met her a half hour later, uh, she goes, wow, this doesn't seem too bad. And uh, I was like, you know, if you stay here long enough, uh, you know, the, there's not a question of if, it's when. And uh, everybody was kind of calm, and then one team scored, Mike. Now these are six-year-olds. Yeah. 50-yard run, who cares? That's all it took. And it all started. And she, she, this lady is an all-American track star who was uh, uh, filming and interviewing. And the kid who missed the block, the coach pulled him right in front of everybody and yelled at him. If you don't want to be here, get someone who does. Uh, another father then yelled at his kid, toughen up. Uh, another one said uh, to another coach, and by the way, there were eight coaches, because the refs helped coach at that at level, eight coaches telling these kids what to do. And then another play was run, and the kid got tackled behind, and a coach took his clipboard, threw it down on the ground, <laughs> and said, what the is going on here. You're kidding. And I turned to the lady and I said, see, and it doesn't matter uh, where you go or, or what event, uh, eventually if you get enough time, it will uh, it will break down. And so I decided to write about it. We have a weekly newsletter. You can join it from uh, DJ at frozenshorts.com. Send me your email and we'll put you on the list. But uh, it has gotten a tremendous response, Mike, and uh, I appreciate you having me back again on your show. Well, you guys do a great job. Well, no, when you when you when I saw that uh, story, I've been reading your emails, and you know we agree on about ninety nine percent of what's going on out there. Uh, but that one that just floored me because I'm sorry, I might tell my high school girls something like that. <laughs> I had some senioritis. Like every high school coach gets some senioritis. I'm going to tell one of those girls, you don't want to be out here. Go play golf. Go play tiddly. Go do something else if you don't want to be here. 
that's a little bit different. I'm trying to get them to take responsibility for their actions. A six-year-old, I mean, there's going to, I don't know if you saw the one thing I see, but it's like they're going to change every 10 minutes. So now, right now, they may not want to be there. 10 minutes later, they want to play. Next 10 minutes later, they want to do something else. To say that, and especially the cussing, that just, uh, you know, especially at that age. But I can't believe a coach would tell a six-year-old that. Well, I want to mention something to your listeners right now is that what you heard Mike just say was not pitting these seniors in high school against each other. You have to notice and understand the subtle difference in coaches as an art. He said, go do something else. This coach was telling six-year-olds that if he didn't want to be there, he was going to put someone else into their place, which is devastating to a six-year-old because it denotes failure. Yep. What Mike has said, said, and it's a, a huge difference, people, but it was very subtly said, is that we're believers in choice. This coach wasn't giving anybody else a choice. And first of all, six-year-olds, they got their hands in their pants and they're looking around, they got a cool helmet and a jersey on, and that's all they care about. Oh, and snack. But there is a tremendous amount of pressure on these kids, and as, as you know, 70% of them quit by the time they're 13. You know, it, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's pretty crazy. Uh, the other day, uh, believe it or not, VJ, I had a lady ask me what I thought about because her six-year-old wanted to play football, and she was worried about all the injuries. And I said, well, there's a little difference. I said, I didn't play in high school because the family doctor told me same kind of thing, too many permanent injuries because of bones not being developed. But I said, there's a little difference. For six-year-olds, it's probably not so bad because they're not being hit by a 250-pound lineman that runs a 40 and four flat. They're being hit by other six-year-olds, so they're probably not going to do much damage to each other. We used to think that, but what we found now, uh, again, if the people go on my website, frozenshorts.com, you'll see our two interviews with Jeff, Dr. Jeff Bazzari, who's probably the number three guy in the country, a concussion expert. This guy is, is cutting edge is that now we realize even at that little age, their heads are too heavy for their bodies. So it's just the jarring, bumping, and, and you've seen these these, uh, these games, Mike, they really just bump into each other for the yeah. most part. Um, and the heads are too heavy for the bodies, and they get concussed-like symptoms, oh, wow. uh, which is why a lot, there's a huge movement now to, to uh, for people, you saw it with USA Hockey with uh, no check, but you're starting to see more and more people uh, as the data comes out for these kids not to uh, have contact at that young age. And, again, we're all for competition, but make it skill development. Well, it's, it's fun to watch the six-year-olds. I don't care whether it's football, baseball, whatever it is. It's it's fun to watch six-year-olds do any any sport. <laughs> and that's how it should be. Well, yeah. At six I, years old, it should be fun. I mean, you're no. yelling at the kids like that. It's more fun. Are you here? Can you hear us, VJ? Uh oh, are you there? I Hello? can hear him. I can hear VJ. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you, VJ. Push push the button. I don't think he can hear us. I don't, can you hear us, VJ? I can hear you. Okay, Arvin. <laughs> uh oh, something happened. I don't know what happened there. Okay, no, uh, a six year old. It's often more fun. I mean, it's it's not only fun for them, but it's fun for us to watch it. Okay, we got line two. We got him back. Can we try it again, or are we there? And we got you back, VJ. Can you hear us? Yep. Okay. Yeah, okay, I could hear you back. before, but I guess you couldn't hear us. I was telling Correct. Alex at, at six years old, it's it's almost as much fun or more fun for the people watching the game as it's for the kids playing it because they're so cute. You especially see these little tiny kids with these uniforms on. You know, and, and as a matter of fact, there was a lady posted a picture on my Facebook page. Uh, I guess it was her kid in center field. Well, and well going al- after a fly ball. It looks so cute. Well, know? it's almost comedic at some it's, point. Yeah, it is. You know, you know, the funny thing, too, is that uh, I don't know if you remember that commercial where the, the little, the little I want to say it was a six-year-old. Oh, in, the Jim in, Harbaugh. No, no, no. That, oh, well, that was a different one. But but there was one where he started running the wrong way on the oh, field. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And everybody's telling him, go the other go way. The other go way. the other way. Yeah. As a matter of fact, VJ, what do you think of that Jim Harbaugh commercial? Have you seen that one? No, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, it, it, it's it's really cool because it addresses a couple different things. They got uh, Jim Harbaugh's coach and a group of six, eight. Well, he's, oh, yeah, he, yeah, he's yeah. young. I he's was yelling. thinking of the uh, 
Ravens coach, the San Francisco coach, yes. Yes, and, and the dad comes up, and the moms are saying, we've had enough of this, and the dad comes up and then stops and says, you're doing a great job. And I, I like that from a couple of angles because it's sort of, he wasn't really yelling negative at the kids. Well, you're saying eye formation, eye yeah, formation. You know, it was, it, it, it yep. was over their head. So the moms addressed, so wait a minute, I've had enough of it. But then at the same time, as the dad came up ready to chew him out, then the dad backs off and says, you know, he is a volunteer. He's helping out. Let's give him some encouragement, too. And so I thought that commercial is pretty cool. We, uh, in our talks, we say unilaterally, um, and I like love what your co-host just said, if you're not laughing at a six-, seven-, and eight-year-old sporting event, and by the way, they are not athletes. Uh, they may be a little genetically coordinated, gifted, but Come they are no means athletes. <laughs> right. Um, if you're not laughing, you're missing the point. Yeah. Because it is comedic, and they're awful, and they're supposed to be awful. You know why? Because they're six. Or, you have, or you're the scorekeeper. If you're not laughing, you might be the scorekeeper. <laughs> yes. It's supposed to be hysterically. My daughter tried out, not tried out, uh, joined a, uh, a hockey uh, um, thing for beginners. And a uh, guy on the ice, great guy. I've known the guy for a long time. We worked together. And he had 50 kids on the ice. And you could stand up above for this observation deck. And I'm watching it, and it looked like somebody had an electromagnet under the ice. And just was randomly, or, or for the kids out there, the alligator bopping on the head. Um, and the kids would just randomly fall. And I'm laughing my butt off. I think it's, this is just hysterically funny. A mom leaves the observation, runs down to the rink. Now, there's a guy at the door. She blows right by the door. And, of course, being an ex-hockey coach, I know what's going to happen. There's no way that she's not going to fall. There's no way that this kid's <laughs> not going to be embarrassed. There's no way that this is going to end any way but hysterically funny. And, of course, she goes out. She slips. She falls. She catches her balance. She grabs the kid, and they both fall down. Now, I'm laughing out loud. Guy next to me goes, this isn't funny. We paid a lot of money for this. I was like, are you serious? <laughs> I said, I'm a college hockey coach. They said, I do this for a living. This is hysterically funny. Oh, and man. unless you make it fun, the kids won't want to do it. Because you know why? They're kids. That's right. we got to take a commercial break here. Coach Mike, Kids in Sports with our guest, B.J. Stanley. We'll be back after these messages. custom home or business is a huge deal. For some, it's the largest project they'll take on in a lifetime. Choosing your team may be the most important part of ensuring a successful building project. Starting a project by working closely with Core Design will create what's just right for your lifestyle and your property. But selecting the right builder is perhaps the most important part of creating the team. At Core Design's customer service, quality craftsmanship, and integrity are the keys to our company philosophy. Your custom construction dreams are just a phone call away. Core Design at 213-453-1609. Once again, that number is 213-453-1609. We're the Brothers Bear Podcast Live, and I'm your host, Sanch, and I'm always joined by... Edgar. Carlos Medrano. And this is a show where we talk about... Comics, movies, TV, video games... Stand up, music, and many more geeky things. Catch us live on Rat Radio Network on Mondays from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. That's another commercial in the back. The experts know that for pastry, Baker's Bodega has it all. Exclusive brands like Westco Bankmark, Satin Ice, and Pastry Pride. One-on-one -on -one day seminars for cake decorating and gelatin art. So for our service, wide range of ingredients and supplies, and for the low prices, Baker's Bodega has it all. But you don't need to be an expert. Baker's Bodega, 7869 Paramount Boulevard in Pico Rivera. Come, we're waiting for you. 
You're listening to The Mommy Talk, a place where mommies, and don't forget dads, can share their everyday accomplishments and challenges, y mucho más. So tune in every Friday here at RentRadioNetwork.com from 11 through 12. And don't forget to call in at 855-969-RENT. The number is 855-969-RENT. You can follow us on Facebook at The Mommy Talk Show. See you then. A home is the biggest investment in most people's lives. Buying or selling should be a positive experience. Whether you want to be a wealthy real estate investor or just trying to find a place to call home. At AGR and Associates, we focus on the client's needs. We understand the market better than most. Let us bring the value to you and make the right choice. AGR and Associates, making your dream house a reality. Call us today for a free consultation at 562-882-1976. Or you can log on to www.agrrealtors.com. With the track record of great results, bringing knowledge, wisdom, and expertise to you. Hablamos Español. Okay, we're back. Coach Mike here yelling at kids on kids and sports with our guest, VJ Stanley. VJ, I'm going to be yelling at a kid today. Um, I guess their only excuse, even, and that's, I'm using the word loosely for, for, is that she's a freshman. Uh, she's already had some issues, and I found out from another coach yesterday who happens to be one of her teachers that she, didn't take a hundred point test yesterday because it was her birthday. So she said she wasn't going to take a test. Uh oh, I hear you. Oh, I hear you in the phone. You know, I, I hear you, but I don't. I hear uh, him on the phone. Arvin, are we there? We're not getting well, VJ. We, I'm here. There he oh, is. There we okay, go. okay, now we hear you. So yeah, I'm, did you hear what I said, VJ? Yeah, I thought that was awfully random of her. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It was after a uh, six period. And this other coach, Gray, says, what's up to this kid? He says, she said, no, today's my birthday. I'm not taking a test. And I said, sure. Hey, anything to, k- to skip a test, Mike, come on. What's- I've never heard that one. <laughs> I've well, never heard you got to applaud the creativity there, guys. Yeah, you know, it, she's going to think of other things, As random too. as it is, I like peanut butter. Can you swim? <laughs> <laughs> when, VJ, one, one thing that got us going, and Alex he said he might play a little devil's advocate in here, but we all know. They're yelling at the kids. At what yep. age, when, where, how is it appropriate, or is it ever appropriate to be yelling at an athlete? All right, let's back it back to how we do things at Frozen Shorts. We're a uh, science, psychology, and data-driven uh, company. Okay. And so what we have done is gone to many, many teachers, and I'm going to ask you two guys a question in just a minute. Um, We've gone to many, many teachers and asked them the same question. What subject do you teach? How many times have you yelled at a kid during a test while they're taking the test? In psychology, we call it bottlenecking. It's a, they can only, we, even us, can only handle so much information. And, of course, at that young age, it's even less that they can take in. And they're making about three decisions a second, which is pretty huge, um, and which is why they're confused. But if we equivalent a, a, a test to a game, well, now I'm going to ask you two guys. You both played sports. You tell me, just think about it for a second, but you tell me when you made the play in your chosen sport that stuck out in your mind. Just think about the play. The play you made, a great play that, you know, you run into a buddy, he'll say, hey, you remember that? Or if you're around or your kids or someone will ask you about it. And then I ask you this question to answer. Was the coach yelling you at you at that time? Of course not. Wow. Well, well my coach was yelling, kick the ball. <laughs> 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 uh, but, you know, I scored. So did. Yeah. Just, yeah, uh, just to clarify, VJ, uh, Alex played soccer, which we've still had a few discussions about whether that's a sport or not. Uh, <laughs> you know, I thought about that this weekend, too, Coach Mike. <laughs> 
Let me tell you what, something. There was a zero zero score. No, no, no. I was thinking. Okay. I was thinging football's football's. Uh, when I watch a game, a football game, right. it's on the air for about three hours. Right. Okay, but there's only really only fifteen minutes of play. A little bit more than so, yeah. so it's arguably a sport. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think, VJ? You know, the, the real sport there is the commercials, you know? What do you think, VJ? Well, I had a conversation low-level with USA Soccer after uh, my interview with Soccer Nation. It's also on our website. And uh, I explained to this gentleman at uh, USA Soccer is that flat four may be the worst thing ever introduced in the history of youth soccer in the United States because we teach our children how not to lose. We right. teach them to be robots. We mean. Flat four, you have, for, for, for people that don't know soccer, you have four defenders in the back. So you only have 10 guys playing. So you have 40% of your team on the field, not including the goalie, trying to stop the other team from scoring. Europe, on the other hand, has these small-sided games, creativity, touches, and there is no yelling. Matter of fact, they don't even keep score. Yeah, that's so another issue. 10 well, or 11. We're well, working with a gentleman from, from UEFA. Um, the, the, he's, I can't know, he's somehow connected to their general counsel. And we've explained to him that the idea is to get the kids to love and relax and have fun playing. If they choose soccer, if they choose hockey, uh, with Mike, if they choose softball, whatever it is that they choose, there should be a base that is set that will allow them, because athletes are just athletes, they can play any sport, allow them to have fun and enjoy it, want to be active, and then when they develop that love and passion, and nobody develops love and passion when they're getting yelled at. Right. I mean, again, you two guys, uh, you, you've got this show, and again, I compliment you and thank you for having me. But if your producer came out and started yelling at you every single time that you <laughs> went to take the microphone, you wouldn't be doing this very long, and you two are pros. So why are we doing it to six-year-olds? There is no appropriate time to yell at any child on that field all the way up to varsity and then in the varsity level it's emotions we're trying to win uh there's a whole bunch of things going on there everybody gets excited and i understand that but you're watching a 13 year old game and, and going to use alex going to use your soccer we're working with a soccer program so i told the coach uh he was he was he told me and i and this is an exact quote from him we only have so many kids we can play the other kids just can't play, and they know their role is to help the other kids get better. So I said, here's what we're going to do. You're going to take your next practice and your next game. We're going to mark down with your assistant coach all the touches the kids get. And then we're going to mark these 11 special kids, and we're going to mark and chart their pass completion. It was under 30%. Not once did they complete three passes in a row. So these kids just suck less than the others. So, again, now I'll go back to what we talk about constantly on a handicapping a race. Let's just say with you two guys, Alex and Mike, and I'm not picking on either one of you. I'm just using an example no, for your audience. Please and let's just say us. Mike is the slower runner. Alex is the faster runner. That's for sure. We already do know we that. Give, <laughs> do we give Alex a head start? Of course not. That's entitlement. Well, that's exactly what we're doing in youth sports. By giving a kid who just happens to be genetically predisposed at an age, and, and please, people, listen to the word I'm using here, more coordinated, not talented, not athletic, just more coordinated than the others. Right. When you extrapolate that, that means he just sucks less than the other kids because they're awful. And you know why they're awful? They're 10, 11, and 12, and 13. They're supposed to be awful. The next time I see a 13-year-old playing D1, uh, in any sport, I'll change what we're talking about, and then they're giving uh, the, uh, VJ. They're giving them verbals at thirteen. Why can't they? Uh, they're giving them what? They're giving these colleges are giving verbals out to thirteen-year-olds, but they're meaningless. Yeah, I'm a I was a college coach for twenty-one years. It's it's just a ploy to entice you people. You have to get past the clearinghouse. You have to get a number from the clearinghouse, and you can't get that till the end of your junior year. So, all right, you know what? Uh, if she's listening. Um, if you would please tell, uh, let's see, Christy Brinkley that I'm making a verbal offer to take her out on a date. And I love my <laughs> wife, by the way, uh, with all my heart and soul. But, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm making a verbal offer uh, to Christy Brinkley. I mean, it's, it, 
and again, if you listen to the defensive coordinator in, in from Alabama or from LSU, you can hear these guys say, I don't know if this kid can even play in high school. I don't know if this kid... But again, because someone's doing something doesn't mean that it's a good idea. Just right. because it's being done doesn't mean... And again, we use the... Uh, this uh, Professor Ash from uh, Swarthmore University, at 30 people, took the four people, put them in, not included to this group, and they ended up not telling the truth, but swaying the whole group because they were important people. So we see this being done, and again, like I go back to what I say to everybody in all our talks over and over again, there is absolutely no correlation to high school and youth sports to Division One and pro sports. These guys and women are genetic freaks, plus Plus, there's a tremendous amount of luck. Yelling at them does not help the cause. There you go. You know, you mentioned the, the youth soccer and stuff. And, I, and I'll tell you what, I'm going to throw one of my pet peeves out there, VJ. And and I, I, I like the example you gave of when somebody says that it's about being competitive and you use your pizza example. But at the same time, I have a pet peeve. I don't mind six-year-olds and maybe even eight-year-olds. But 10, 11, 12-year-olds, and soccer is the main one that does this with not keeping score. There is nowhere in life where you don't keep score. And why why can't we get back to the – I want to be on your side as far as we're going to teach the skills. It's, it's more about playing than the winning. But at the same time, winning has its purpose. And let's quit – Let's quit associate losing with, with poor self-esteem that just because you lost that game means you're no good. Do you, you get my whole drift there? I, I, that really drives me up a wall because then these kids get up to the next level and they're behind the eight ball in a way because they have all of a sudden they're talking, wait a minute, what's this keeping score stuff? Mm, well, I, I can tell you this. The National um, Michigan State University, um, 28,000 kids, uh, they don't want to keep score. And, and let me, again, we, we use science, psychology, and data. Let me use the psychology here for you, Mike. These kids fear the ride home. These kids are unbelievably pressurized by the score. Um, and, again, winning, <clears throat> and let, let's be clear, uh, with you and Alex, you both have played in games where you played well and lost. You sure. both played in games where you played poorly and won. So winning is a false base. And in this, in this podcast you're doing right now, you're not competing with the other uh, stations. You're trying to put out the best show possible. Well, a college coach, we'll use college for an example here, 80% of our time is spent recruiting. So in that context, there is no real winning and losing. And if you talk to most coaches during the preseason we're actually playing more kids, so winning and losing really doesn't matter. And again, back to the the, the little kids, you we, we already know they're competitive. They're they're not going to to worry about the score in terms of validating who they are. And I'll use the example of this year's uh, All Star Game for baseball, the home run derby that was played the night before. They gave forty kids, it looked like, instructions to go out and shag balls. No coaches, no parents, nobody. By the way, there was 30,000 or 50,000 people watching these kids. Oh, wow. Any ball that didn't go home run was fair game. They already know about competition. And let's take the pizza thing one thing further. The kid that doesn't get the piece of pizza, he didn't fail. He just wasn't competitive enough. And the only way to change that is internal competition. Okay, we got to take a commercial break. We're going to get back for some more pizza because there's something you said at the beginning of that that I want to address. Kids in Sports, Brant Radio Network. We'll be right back. Nurses Life Express provides unique apparel for all the hardworking nurses that wear many hats. It's apparel that expresses nurses' amazing, humorous, and caring personalities. After all, nurses are as influential as their united goal to help others. Nursing's not easy, but somebody's got to do it. For more information, please call 562-270-4312 or visit their website at www.nurselife.com. 
www.nurselyfe.com. Nurseslife.com, where nurses' lives are expressed. Three balls, two strikes, the pitch. Make your team look like pros with custom lineup cards. Whether you are a travel team, rec team, all-star team, or just some old guys playing slow pitch, we can make your team look a little better with some custom lineup cards. For the umpire, for the opponent, for the scorekeeper, for the dugout, no matter where your lineup card goes, you will look like a big league team with your team logo and name on top of your personalized lineup card. Just visit customlineupcards.com. With the best prices in town, you are sure to hit a home run with us. Visit customlineofcards.com and go pro. Are you watching the game at home? Why? Come watch it at Mambo Grill, the hottest spot in Downey. You'll have good food, drinks, and a great time at a low price. We have the coldest beer in our sports bar, where you can enjoy the game on any of our huge flat screen TVs. And when your home team wins, you get 25% off anything in Mambo Grill. We're on Downey Avenue, one block north of Firestone, or visit us on the web. Mambo Grill, love at first bite. Hey, bro, this is a good game. You know what would make it better? What, bro? A michelada. A michelada? What's a michelada? A michelada is somewhere in the middle of a Mexican Bloody Mary and a Mexican margarita. Oh, I got you covered, bro. You got a cup in your pocket? No, sir. I got my pocket-sized michelada. Mucho macho michelada. pocket size? pocket size, so you can take it with you anywhere you go. Where'd you get that at? At the nearest convenience store, and you can also buy it at muchomachomichelada.com. You know what will make it better? After we get drunk, if they had a line, we can call. We can call their drunk man. You can leave a message and then log on to the site and listen to your stupidity afterwards. What's that number? It's 855-MICHE69. What's that number again? 855-MICHE69. Awesome. Mucho macho michelada. Coe's just pointed out to me that when he did a search for kids in sports, he said there's lots of kids in sports out there. There's only two with a Z that I know of, and the other one's in Australia, and they do a franchise thing. KIDZ and is a Nancy Sports.com. But if you want to make sure you spell things correctly, if you go to your kids and sports, spelled out with an S, spelled properly. With your at the beginning? With your at the beginning, Y O U R, yourkidsandsports.com, you'll come to the website also. I did that because I know there's those people that the Z throws them off. And uh, what can I say? You know, well, I was, I was looking for your email address, and uh, it's not even on your business card. Yeah, it is. Your, your email address? Yes, is I'm going to show you next break. It, it, it must be on the back or something. No, no, it's right there on the front. I saw I saw the website address. We're going to do the homework. Uh, you got to do your homework, man. You got 20 crunches for you. 20. Uh, Coach Mike here, my email address, Coach Mike at kidsandsports.com, K-I-D-Z, and is a Nancy, sports.com. Our guest today on Kids and Sports, V.J. Stanley, author of Stop the Tsunami in Youth Sports. And I, I love this guy because he's challenging me. Because I, I agree with about 99% of what he's saying, but yet there's things that we've grown up with for all of our lives that we just can't let go of. But, VJ, you did say something at the beginning of that last comment you were making, and it had to be about the 21,000 kids that didn't like to go home. The problem wasn't what because they won or lost. It was because of how they were treated by somebody else. Correct. Okay, that's something, that's what we got to change. Just like you said, because here's where I'll tell you what, let's go through that last commentary you made, and I'll tell you right where, because I'm right in the middle of that in a, in a number of ways. Number one, like you said, the preseason games, college or high school, not all, even travel ball, you have friendlies. Not all coaches do it this way, but I think most do. I think the best ones do. When I've got a friendly, when I've got a preseason game, when I've got my tournaments, unless it's, I may choose to win, try to win one of the tournaments if I think we're in that talent level. But I'm going to make sure all the kids get an opportunity to play because this is their time to show me and the test. This is their preseason test 
because when it comes down to league, now the best nine are going to start, and the rest of them have a role to support that team. But the best nine are going to start for the league games. But before that, I need to. Everybody needs to have the opportunity. Everybody needs to be able to show me uh, what they do. Because I'll tell you what, there's one kid right now that I have that's a senior this year that'll be on varsity, and I sort of feel I should. I mis- made a mistake. I should have brought her up last year, but there was it was. I don't want to say that she's lazy because she's not, but she does. I don't think she always pushes out as hard as she can. And so in practice, I might not have. I might have overlooked her a little bit. I said, "Well, look, she's somebody I'm going to look at." Well, she's not quite ready for varsity. And then I watch her in the games. I'm thinking, I should have this kid upstairs last year. So fit in a couple of those. It's it's about the people, how they treat them on the way home. I agree with you. Let's get all the kids a chance. But there are times we want to win those games. And let's teach them that winning is okay, too. Right. But in that context, uh, I want to go back to what you said about the best nine and the other support. It's, and I want to clarify this for your audience. It's the nine who are playing the best, not the nine most talented, not the nine That's who correct. have done it before. You're That's only correct. as good as your last game. Right. And if this kid is not playing, and what happens is coaches believe, uh, and one of my one of my other sayings is because uh, I feel about it with uh, Congress, and I'm not political at all. But do you really think these people that got us into this mess are the ones that are going to get us out? Oh, that's, that's a whole that's a whole other show. <laughs> and so, but what I'm tra- I'm extrapolating it to use sports without being harsh, but being again, this is the psychology of it: uh, is let these kids, if they take an old for four, then the next kid gets a chance. Now, let me go back to the soccer one I was doing before the break. So we go up to the varsity guy, and he says the exact same thing, that they've got to have these kids. And so I'm, I go to four of his games, 320 minutes, because we play 80-minute games here in New York State. Not once did his team complete four passes. Not once did he go over 14 guys playing. Now I'm watching on the bench, and these kids now are having to do math to play high school sports, which is ridiculous. They're having to divide the coach's ego. Divided by the score, divided by the time left, divided by the other team's coach's ego, multiplied by how many other kids are on the bench to determine whether they're going to get a shot to play. So I went to the coach and I said, Coach, I said, uh, you know, some of these kids aren't playing. How come they didn't play? He goes, they don't deserve to play. They're not playing well in practice. I go, do you know why they're not playing well in practice? Because you don't play them in a game. I said, why is it that it's a 16- and 17-year-old's problem to be able to show you what they can do when in actuality, again, they're 16 and 17 years old. They don't develop fully until they're 23, 24. So let's have them all be pushing each other. And when they do that, then we'll find out. What bothers me most about high school and youth sports is that we, we purposely limit competition and enhance entitlement by not allowing kids repeated chance to show their abilities. Interesting. Because, by the way, every time you two guys did something great, it was probably after a mistake, and you corrected it. Oh, sure. But so let the kids play. At, at some we point, do it in college. Huh? They do that, you say, in college? We do it in college. Kids get benched. Look, five years ago when Auburn, four years ago when Auburn won the uh, national championship in football, their freshman was the top running back. They had five running backs with full rides. It's play by performance, gentlemen. If you don't do it, the next one. And that's how the kids get better because they get pushed by each other. Well, sure. You have starting spots, not starting players. Right, okay. I, I, I go for that. Well, well, let's let's go back to how we started the show. We started the show about the, the six-year-old uh, team that was getting yelled at by the adults, <laughs> okay? The, these, the coaches... You know, you're trying to uh, to convince us of a concept, VJ, that that uh, that you have uh, extrapolated through your experience and through your wisdom. But how do you yeah. con- how do you convince these people uh, that are yelling at at the coaches and yelling at the uh, at the players? Uh, how do you convince them to to now take that position? You know, the, excellent the, the, question. You know what I mean? Because they're they're excellent question. So maybe you can expand on that a little bit because I think that's where you're headed. Here's how we do it, and again. We didn't get into this situation overnight, so it's not going to be cured. We try to get one team and one coach at a time, and we're successful doing it. Again, if you guys go on the website, you'll see what we did with the Pop Warner flag football team. No coaches, no parents, 
They were averaging 16 plays. We had 21 plays with a minute of instruction. We explained to them, again, science, psychology, and data, that six-year-olds, when they're being taught in school, seven- and eight-year-olds, the teachers don't ever yell at them. When they're taking a test, it's quiet. These are the things for eight hours a day that they're being trained to do. Second thing we tell them is there is no correlation between the pros, the Division One, and your coaching. What you're coaching is from what you learn on TV. These kids are micro-professional athletes. They're not many adults, and they're not remote-controlled robots attached to your personal joystick. Next, we then gently explain to these coaches, try it. You're going through all this angst, which is when we get called in. It's not because it's happy time. You're going through all this angst. We ask you for one quarter not to say a word. And, again, go on our website. We did it with a basketball team. You'll see Eric Rose. We changed the whole dynamic of his basketball team. These are eight-year-olds. He didn't yell. Everybody was smiling and laughing. He kept the statistics. They improved dramatically without the yelling. Again, the psychology of it, Alex, is that it's called bottlenecking. They just can't handle that much information. If, when you were just talking about the uh, uh, his uh, email address, uh, not being on his business card, what if uh, I started yelling at both of you during that time because you, you didn't have everything right and you weren't working together and you weren't doing this and that? And that's what happened. I mean, you guys are pros. These kids are freezing up. So once we get the coach who does it our way, and by the way, it's frozen shorts way, and he does it, and it's successful. Everybody around sees it. And then he goes to another game and does it. And so now we're affecting, slowly with baby steps, hundreds and hundreds of kids and teens. And, again, we're not asking for everybody to get it. We're, we're a huge believer in choice. We can't do it anyway. Our job isn't to decide when if or how the light goes on. Our job is to just keep flipping the switch. Well, I, I, think, I think that the important thing that you said is that you had an improved performance – Without yelling, without yes, you, we have the data. Yeah, th it's there. Oh, so, yeah. so, 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 realistically speaking, the people that that are uh, engaging in in this uh, behavior, if you will, are actually the losers. Correct, they're, and they're telling the other coach how to beat them. Well, exactly. Yeah, but the exactly. other coach isn't listening, VJ. That's the <laughs> yeah, because he's yelling too. <laughs> no, I agree. I, 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 Which, by the way, we did find his email address it, on the back of the... <laughs> leave it to the soccer guy. He's looking at my wrong business card. My design card, I don't have my email address on there. He's looking at my design card. I'm like, on my show, Kids in Sport, you got to look at my Kids in Sports card. And there's the email address right well, there. Well, Coach Mike, when, when the lottery bag comes around next week, yeah. make, make sure you wrap this the dollar on this card, not the other one. Well, I figured you knew that. Keep that. I, I want you to keep I'm, that. I'm going to have to yell I'll at you I'll even autograph time. it for you if you want. <laughs> Okay, VJ, let's get back to that now because this is where, you know, I don't think you have any problem converting any coaches or most coaches or parents or whatever in any leagues or any rec leagues, especially I'm going to say 12 and under, and I'm just going to pick out a number. Where, where I could see you running into objections is the 14 and over crowd, especially the travel teams, the high school teams. Now, I find myself, and I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of try to be my an honest judge here for me. If, and matter of fact, let me throw the number out there: eight five five nine six nine seven two six eight. Yeah, especially somebody that knows me on there. Not too many people have seen me coach, but I think I fall a little bit in between. I don't yell for the most part. I raise my voice at times simply because I'm on a softball field and I have to. But the and I and I do think I have more success with teams that are considered less talented because some of our opponents in our league are like all travel ball kids, and they're all the, the top players. Half of them already have been verbaled, or uh, all the juniors and seniors are signed or whatever. So I think we've done pretty well over it. and I do think there is some truth in what you're saying. I do think there's a, a gray area that's missing there because I think you're going to have some kids that, if they're on the bench at all, I, I had a kid that started last year, most of the season, VJ, and she still, at the end of the season, sat down and told me and my assistant coach that we did not give her a chance. We're going to talk about this. We got a break already. You're trying to make too much money out there. Awesome. Oh well, we got we got to listen to the sponsors. <laughs> we'll be back, Coach Mike, on the Rant Radio Network.
Been in an accident? Then you need your vehicle professionally repaired. That's exactly what you get when you bring your vehicle to Greg's Auto Body Repair. Three quotes within minutes. We will provide everything you need for a hassle-free auto body repair, from an accurate estimate to working with your insurance company. We will get your vehicle to its pre-accident condition as soon as possible. Greg's Auto Body has been serving Los Angeles County and local cities since 1970. Call us at 562-789-1300. Hey, people, are you ready? Are you ready for some football? Uh, no, it's called a triple threat. Wait, a triple threat of what? Entertainment, gossip, and pure fun. It's Tinseltown Talkies, Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. Only on www.rantradionetwork.com. Don't miss out if you want to be a part of all the action. With Rasha and Kimo. That's right. See you then. Looking for a delicious, fresh family meal that's ready when you are and easy on your budget? Welcome to Piara Pizza. We make our pizzas with handmade dough, 100% real cheese, and tomato sauce blended with our own spices. Nothing is ever frozen. We always have large pepperoni and cheese pizzas fresh and waiting for you for only $5. Or choose one of our specialty pizzas. We have veggie, meat lovers, supreme, and Hawaiian. Add an order of our amazing hot wings, cheesy bread, or breadsticks. Our locations are ultra modern, ultra clean, and open seven days a week. Visit any one of our locations today. Or check us out on the web at www.piarapizza.com. Piara Pizza. Fresh, hot, and ready for you when you come in. Stop in for your Piara Pizza today. The Share Foundation is the health division of the Koi Chiropractic Institute, a 501c3, 509a2 public nonprofit organization dedicated to the growth and development of the natural health care services. In particular, through the chiropractic profession, offering health services at the Share Clinics in the greater Los Angeles area. Your donations can help in expanding these facilities across the nation research programs, and public education, thus offering a solution to the many of the health challenges we face. Your donations are tax-deductible and can be sent through our website at www.sharefoundation.com. That's www.cherfoundation.com by clicking on the donation button. Thank you. I like this guy. He calls us professionals. You keep saying that, huh? Oh, I like that. We're going to have to yeah. have him on. Maybe he can be another co-host. Yeah. Coach, <laughs> oh, I take it easy now. Coach Mike, kids in sports. <laughs> I already, I'm going to get my pig slip. <laughs> <laughs> the Rant Radio Network. Uh, the Rant Towers here. Don't forget to like me on Facebook. You'll find kids in sports and also custom lineup cards on there. Uh, get a chance to baseball or softball teams. I understand soccer and hockey maybe use lineup cards, too, so I guess I could do lineup cards for them, too. Let me know what you need, and I'll design it up for you and set you up. Our guest today, V.J. Stanley, uh, author of the book uh, uh, Stop the Tsunami in Youth Sports and head of Frozen Shorts. So, V.J., all that mouthful I gave before the break there, uh, were you able to catch some notes on that? Yep, but I have some sad news for you, Mike. Uh-oh. One of the saddest things uh, we've encountered in youth sports in actuality, many, many times, it's harder to change the younger people coaching the younger kids. Really? Stop yelling. Yep. Wow. As you get, as you get older, uh, and again, it, it's part of the rebelliousness, is the psychology we use of teenagers, is, is that they really are looking to find their own path and their own uh, journey. We use the bowling uh, alley analogy where if you have the bumpers and the ball's going down the middle, you don't say anything to the kid about changing if it hits the bumpers the ball goes back and allows the kid to go on his own path you don't take him the ball and put it back on your own lane well the older kids start tuning the coaches out anyway so therefore they're on their own path <laughs> the younger coaches though believe and i'm going to tell you a very sad story uh we're going to start with how many of your audience members have heard a true two-year-old say this leave me alone i can do it i can do it on my own 
I, I have one so at home. <laughs> I get I get called into a uh, rec soccer league. Six year olds. They're playing thirty two minute games. In the thirty two minute games, they play. Uh, we, I bring a uh, an iPad with a stopwatch. I had to ask my daughter uh, because I had no idea that an iPad had a stopwatch. Evidently, the whole world knows. Uh, I'm the only one that doesn't because uh, I was looking all around the house for it and couldn't find one. And she said, oh, Dad, it's right on your iPad. Who knew? Everybody but me. So I go and I got the director with me, and I just chart how much, uh, the how many minutes they play. In the 32 minutes game, they played 11 minutes and 7 seconds of soccer. In the first 16 minutes, the coach is running up and down by the kids on the field, yelled 27 instructions to the children. It happened to be in this complex that each individual age group went all the way around the complex. They all played. I turned to the director and I said, look at your 13-year-olds, how few kids you have. It all starts right here from yelling at the kids. So I go up to the coach and I and the director introduces me and he says, I don't really have to listen to this, do I? I said, no, you don't. I said, but uh, I just want you to understand that these kids can't do what you're asking them to do and yelling at it. And he says to me, I was hired to coach these kids, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Then I had a woman who said, this is how we do it here. I'm not listening to you, and sent a letter to the board. Now, meanwhile, Jeez. we went to another team. <laughs> it gets worse. We went to another team with a coach who was receptive. We brought in two 19-year-olds. We changed their whole practice. We introduced Simon Says. Uh, we introduced Hokey Pokey. Uh, we introduced throwing the ball. The kids were laughing, yelling, having a ball. The parents loved it. The coaches loved it. We brought these two college kids in to help. We turned the field side to side. They went from the, each kid, in terms of not being able to touch the ball, we improved their touches by 700 percent in a 45 minute practice wow well wow. you know I, it brings a question uh, uh bj i played soccer for eight years um starting i don't know i think it started at about six years old seven years old um you know i remember the coaches well i remember all the parents and the coaches yelling uh at the sidelines and i'll be honest with you i really didn't hear them uh, um, exactly when, say it again please alex I, I, didn't, I didn't hear them i Okay, I could hear them yelling, but that that's about all I could make out of what was noise going on. Noise you heard. I was hearing a bunch of noise. And and that that went on that went on all the way through high school. You know, I I yes. could, I could hear we talked earlier about the you, you said the one play that that maybe was somebody yelling at me was that the best yep. play, you know, with, hey, would you remember back Th that I remember my coach I could hear him in my in my in my mind right now saying kick the ball, but I'll be honest with you, the rest of it was just all a bunch of blah blah blah. I, I we, do a, it. we do a thing with in our talks where we have everybody say all at once their name and address um, with coaches. And then, of course, you can't hear anything. And then we turn to the, the we wait till it's done, and the coaches, of course, are all laughing and looking at each other. I go, now you know what the kids hear. And Alex <laughs> just told you that's exactly what happens. Well, you know, you know one thing. So what, what good is it at that point? You well, know, it's, no, you know, you know, correct. You know, one thing I've learned that I try to do more of now. And I, I forget, I probably heard it from a couple sources. I know one was probably Bobby Simpson down here at Higher Ground. But um, some of the coaches are saying now, don't try to coach them during the game when they're going to the batter's box or something like that because they're not going to hear you. Even if they hear you, they're not going to hear you. They go in, they give them the sign, and pretty much I stand back and let them listen. Now, if, a ball's, if they swing at a ball over their head, I might just remind them, hey, that thing was over your head. But I'm not sitting there trying to change their batting stance or anything during that at bat. They're already they're they've got enough to focus on. They've got a pitch that's coming at them at 60 miles an hour that they've got to try and hit. You're, you're not going to believe what I just thought of right now. Okay. Do, do you guys remember a uh, Do you guys remember a movie called The Bad News Bears? Yeah. Oh, love it. Talk talk about a good coaching yell here. Do you remember this one? The Kanoski switch. And then the, yes. whole, the the whole team moved to the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. That, that that's good coaching. You know, he's not yelling at the players. No, he was he was being audible, right. but he he was saying it to hey, did, we need to make a shift here. Did, you know, he was being part of the team. Yeah. Not 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 uh uh uh, 
trying to force his will onto the players. There you go. Correct. I believe everybody agrees that we're trying to teach these kids life lessons, correct? Right. Yeah, right. absolutely. Okay. So, in the workplace environment, let's just use anybody who starts a job. Is everybody yelling at them? Is everybody telling them what to do all the time? Depends no, they give them working. some work, they give them some training, and then they let them do it on their own. So if we're teaching them life lessons that they're going to need, and by the way, 85% of all the people that lose their jobs as a massive layoff lose them because they don't get along with coworkers. If we're really trying to teach them life lessons, these are the lessons that they need to learn is that they can do it on their own, that they're not robots. We're starting to work with colleges that are coming to us, uh, low-level AAU people that are saying they're having a tremendous problem with kids coping. And so what we're saying is just let them be kids. Let them make mistakes. It's okay. There's right. a huge difference between mistake and failure. Yep. That, that brings and by the way, nobody can teach a kid how to win. You know, we're, nobody we're... can teach anybody how to win. It's impossible. Derek Jeter just won five World Series championships, which gives him certainly a body of work. I email this man every six months. Everybody says he's a winner, he knows how to win. Then why didn't he win a six? Because <laughs> there's more than him on the field. If there were nine of him, we might be in pretty good shape. No, but he won with those other guys. Why didn't? He, why, if he knew how to win? Right. I mean, we got a team here in upstate New York called the Buffalo Bills, and I really don't like to pick on them. All right, I do. You know, they got <laughs> four Super Bowls, and they didn't win. Yeah, you, they didn't. How, at some point... If you knew how to win, because it's an abstract concept, it is impossible to teach anybody how to win. These people use these sound bites, and it's impossible. Otherwise, and I'm going to use you. I'm not picking on you, Mike, but I'm just going to use you. Uh, you have an all solid reputation as a coach. You've won championships. Nope. Why didn't you repeat? I didn't because win nobody any... knows the formula. I didn't win any championships. Last year we had uh, a fair amount of uh, some drama, some senioritis. And yet, at the end of the season, I still had some of my players that felt we had a really good season. Part of it's because I do a lot of what, what you're saying as far as letting them take ownership. Uh, I already had an, uh, one of the other coaches on campus was laughing the first week because I, I do a sixth period from day one of school, and I, and I will refuse to – I don't even pull a softball out for the first month because I, I don't want them to be burned out when it comes to when we're supposed to Correct. be starting our season. So the first week I said, girls, you're in charge. You do some condition. I don't care if you play duck, duck, goose, or you do your callous things, whatever you each, and I'd pick a different player each day. You'd be in charge of it. And they did. They went and played some duck, duck, goose. They played some tag, and they found out one of the girls come to bed one day because she said the uh, one of the other coaches told his girls, you don't want to be like those softball girls, and he is, he's out there pushing his girls harder and harder, and they're not in season yet either. So – uh, you know, I just take that for what it is. There's, there's a time I do a little things a little bit differently, and I understand there's a lot of coaches don't agree with that. Now I will pick a point with you, here, VJ, and, and pick it on Buffalo, which Alex this, doesn't this is, mind. This is the one percent we're talking about. Well, Val, Alex doesn't mind you picking on Buffalo because it takes heat off his Cowboys. But you, when you talked about you can't teach somebody how to win, I partially disagree from the standpoint you're picking on single games. But the Buffalo Bills were still winners. And if there's a better example than anybody around right now, you can. Some people know how to win, and then T Tim Tebow is a prime example. No, they don't. No, nobody knows how to win. Alex, you were eight years in soccer. Tell me how to win tonight's game, guarantee. Oh, no, there's no. You're I, hey, on if, one I, game. if I knew that, I'd be, I'd be in Vegas, You're I picking think. You're picking on Jerry Jones just built a $2 billion mile $2 billion mausoleum to himself. I mean, yeah. the stadium. Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and he would do anything to win. And he can't. He has all the resources to BJ, win. Come on now. Nobody on. in the planet, nobody knows how to win. No, it's you're talking impossible. again, VJ, you just backed up what I said. You're talking about a single game. I'm talking about why is it there's a program like the New York Yankees that have more titles than anybody else or the Lakers because they know how to win. Are they going to win every time? Of course not. No, they don't know how to win, Mike. They know how to develop players because they know it's the journey and not the goal. You cannot control winning. You can. That's why they have their best coaches at the lowest end because it's all about development. And by the way, not only is it about development, it's about a mass amount of children developing, and that pool in itself gives you 
the competition and the better athletes. Well, that's true. And, Nobody and, knows how to win. Yeah, so, well, that and, and all games, every single game is, is subject to chance. That's right. Yes, well, luck. Yeah, well, no, not, I won't say all luck. It's a matter of developing the skill. That's why I say teach first, win later. And I, and I got a, a quote that a friend of mine brought up that we'll talk about after the break. We're done with an hour already, by yeah, golly. An hour gone already. Time to start the second hour. Coach Mike, Kids in Sports, Rant Radio Network. We'll be back in a minute. Custom home or business is a huge deal. For some, it's the largest project they'll take on in a lifetime. Choosing your team may be the most important part of ensuring a successful building project. Starting a project by working closely with Core Design will create what's just right for your lifestyle and your property. But selecting the right builder is perhaps the most important part of creating the team. At Core Design's customer service, quality craftsmanship, and integrity are the keys to our company philosophy. Your custom construction dreams are just a phone call away. Core Design at 213-453-1609. Once again, that number is 213-453-1609. What up, foodie freaks? It's Chef Bev Lazo with the Culinary Trend Show. Join me and my brigade every Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m. where we will be cooking up some crazy stuff that will give you the appetite for discussion. It's all about the good food, good friends, and good times. Only here on RantRadioNetwork.com. The experts know that for pastry, Baker's Bodega has it all. Exclusive brands like West Coast Bank Mart, Satin Ice, and Pastry Pride. One-on-one -on -one day seminars for cake decorating and gelatin art. So for our service, wide range of ingredients and supplies, and for the low prices, Baker's Bodega has it all. But you don't need to be an expert. Baker's Bodega, 7869 Paramount Boulevard in Pico Rivera. Come, we're waiting for you. A home is the biggest investment in most people's lives. Buying or selling should be a positive experience. Whether you want to be a wealthy real estate investor or just trying to find a place to call home. At AJR Associates, we focus on the client's needs. We understand the market better than most. Let us bring the value to you and make the right choice. AJR Associates, making your dream house a reality. Call us today for a free consultation at 562-882-1976. Or you can log on to www. HERrealtors.com With the track record of great results bringing knowledge, wisdom, and expertise to you. Hablamos Español. Yeah, feedback's always good, right? Are, are you going to tell him that? I'm going to tell him that. Okay. I'm going to tell him. Coach Mike here. Kids in sports. Just don't tell them where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell them where it came from. The Rant Radio Network, and here's the real value of sports. We get to beg on each other and laugh. That's the real value of sports. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, what we should do is we should be recording uh, the during the break because we have some good conversation during the break. That's right. We ought to do. We could use those as those viral videos. Yeah, there you go. Um, give your homework second hour of the show if you're just tuning in. The phone number here eight five five nine six nine rant. I especially want to hear from you if you're a yeller or a yelly. If either yeah. you're the one that's yelling at the kids or you're the one that the kid that got yelled at and tell us how that affected you, feel free to give us a call here. We want to hear from you. If you get this in the podcast later, send me that email, Coach Mike at kidsandsports.com. And because um, I want to hear your story, my golly, maybe you get a win on a trip on the show. Now, VJ, we were talking off the break, and I'm, I'm saying we're mixing semantics here. And a prime example is the Yankees this year. And Alex was saying, well, if you go 15-1, you're a winner. But if you go 8-8, eight eight, you're not. I said, well, by definition, if you're 8-8, eight eight, you're 500. I said, let's look at the Yankees this year. The Yankees winners, well, they didn't get to the World Series, but they're still one. They won no, no, more the than playoffs, half their games. The playoffs. They, they didn't the get playoffs. to the playoffs, but they still won more than half their games. And yeah, they did it with half the team winners? in the they hospital. They didn't even go preseason. I mean, or, or But they had half the team in the hospital, too. They're winners. They're the, there's programs that are winners, 
And, and I think when I say that you can teach somebody to win or a player knows how to win, I think that's a matter. Of, maybe so, VJ, so now, the correct now you've made, talk about now you made winning fuzzy now. It's a little fuzzy now. What's winning now? Well, if, if you're looking Vince Lombardi style or whatever, to you know, you got to yeah. If there's those that think if you don't win at all, then you're not the winner. There's some great area, but there just now, like well, coach. but it's like I point out with high school, Southern California, we have over 500 high schools in seven divisions. There's seven teams that are going to win CIF championship, Southern Section championship. Does that mean the other 490 some teams are losers? Some of them are, but oh, no. Okay, okay, I understand what you're saying. Okay. I understand what you're saying, but but when you're looking at the societal outlook of it all, and this is, I think, this is where the yelling comes from. Now, this is the the, the topic because I want to win exactly because it's about winning. It's that it's that end result. Okay, okay. let's okay. take a step further. And, and and this is where I think VJ saying that, that 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 kind of pressure yeah. is creating a situation where now you're going to have a, a little bit uh, less interest in the sport. You're going to have uh, some hurt feelings. You're going to have some hurt, hurt self-esteems, some things that actually work against you in the sport. I agree. But now exactly. at, the, at the higher levels, I don't think it's, it, it, like you said, from 12 and under, and maybe, maybe even 14. Maybe you can get me to 14 here, VJ. I'll go for that. But above that, I don't have a problem if there's pressure or whatever because when you get a job, there's pressure. When you get a job, if you do not perform on your job, and you might have a boss that yells at you. Okay? Well, well, this is something we talked about on the first break. All right. Uh, VJ was talking about the game that they were looking at, the six-year-olds, and the, the, the kids are being yelled at. Right. And, 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 and he spoke about the pressure that's being put on these six-year-old right. kids. And, and uh, one of the things that I mentioned was, and this is a, I was talking about maybe, maybe playing devil's advocate for a second. Okay. Let's talk about real pressure. You not you don't know where, the, where your next uh, bed is going to be, or maybe your next meal. Okay, I mean I'm I'm playing devil's advocate. I don't, I, I agree with VJ. This is a this is a, a bad behavior or wrong right, behavior. Right. Okay, but but when we talk about uh, sports being metaphoric now to life, right? Okay, is it, you know some would some would argue I'm not one of them, but some would argue that this is a good pressure for these six year old kids, that this is something that they need to cope with life. Now again, I don't agree with that. I'm just right, I'm, right. I'm throwing it out there. I'm throwing it on the table, in terms of you know, hey, uh, a voice for the listeners, if you will, as to some of the listeners. Some of the, well, like VJ said, I, and I'm a little surprised to hear you say that, VJ. That it would seem to me that, and I, and I understand where you're coming from because I've seen parents that have resisted me in rec leagues because I've tried to tell them, look, you know, we need to teach first, we need to win later, uh, and I I think that goes all the way up. I had a college coach once tell me that I, when, we, when my daughter was at her camp, that look at all that, I got 200 kids out here, and they all got a pitching coach or a hitting coach, but how many have a defensive coach? Uh, there's a bunch of them that couldn't throw a strike from center field to home. That They got to teach them how that. But then I have another friend of mine that said when it comes to the college or uh, pro levels, and even so, to some degree with high school levels, of, especially in football, that they don't have time to teach first. They're expected to win now. And I still say teaching becomes a part of that. Well, I would I would give you these two examples. One, uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Nick Saban. Um, I've heard that. He had a pretty good run. Uh, went to the Miami Dolphins. Now, I'm not sure how in that journey from Tuscaloosa to Miami uh, he forgot how to win. And then he came <laughs> back to Alabama and won. So I'm not sure how 30,000 feet over Tuscaloosa, all of a sudden, it came back to him. No, what we do is collect the most amount of athletes. One of my favorite, uh, Pete Carroll, when he was coaching at USC at Competition Wednesday. Um, but Nick Saban understands the more athletes you have and the more they compete with each other, and that's what we're trying to teach them. It's right. like the Kentucky Derby, just once. I want him to interview the horse at the end of the race. <laughs> Look, I've been dragging this guy on my back for a mile and a half. <laughs> He's spanking me. The other horses are kicking dirt up into my face. You just put a 25-pound bed of roses on top of me. I'm allergic. I'm hungry. I'm two years old. I'm thirsty. And you're talking to the jockey? <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Yeah, that's uh, what See, did, the what did, what did jockey is, do exactly? The whole point of what we're trying to teach you, pros and short, is it, it, we call it a holistic, uh, generic approach. But it is 
letting kids be kids, and there's positive and negative pressure, but there is no way that a coach can teach these kids how to win. What you want to do is put kids in a position where they're working with each other, they're helping each other, and in that context, then they develop the ability to be better as a unit than as an individual, which ironically helps the individual. And the way you do that is by allowing them to first participate all the way up to 13 with equal play. And by the way, that is competitive. It's entitlement when you start playing the kids more before that time than others, because as I explained to you, you're handicapping a race in the opposite way that we always do it. And then after that, it's play by performance. And you let everything be fluid. And when you do that, you will prepare these kids to be better husbands, moms, fathers, wives, friends, and business people. You know, we're not, we're not building rockets or curing cancer here. VJ, 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 stop a minute. I wanted to have one thing that we can agree on 100%, and you yeah. just you just blew it again. Because they, they're, no, they're, <laughs> just, you just say 99, equal play up to 99%. Thir- <laughs> equal play up to 13 is an entitlement because, unfortunately, and I'm not, I'm not saying it shouldn't be able to work. I would like to, there's no such thing as equal play. Even at, at even the leagues that have it, there's still no such thing as equal play. Uh, but the fact is, by it may, and six year old there's not, but by thirteen, if they had equal play up to then, it would be worse because you have those kids that say, "I'm not going to work any harder because I get to play anyhow." Well, our our data and the data from Michigan State University absolutely, un one hundred percent, unequivocally um, denies that to be true. Well, I, I, we, that we have I, no that data one... that supports that because what happens is. You can have the kids. Nobody's teaching in that environment. What you have to do is you have kids that can start saying they're playing better and kids can finish the game. But what we found, I'll give you another basketball example. We had this exact same complaint. So we went in and, and uh, mentored a basketball, a modified 13-year-old, 12- to 13-year-old basketball team. All sorts of problems on the team, but they were winning. So go to the coach. You go, here's what we're going to do. You had 10 kids. We're going to do five and five. We're going to make the teams equal and let him play. Unbelievable. He comes to me, it actually literally jogs to me after the game and says, you're not going to believe this, VJ, this number three. And I'm old, I don't know names. He gave me the kid's name, and I had to ask him as a number because as a college scout and a professional hockey scout, you just look at numbers, and at the end of the state, you put the names to him. And he goes, he had more points, more assists, and more rebounds in this one game than he had in the first eight. We know that the kids will be competitive. They know they will compete with each other. This group will compete with the other group in how many points they got. It will happen. But what, what the problem is is everybody says it's entitlement when in actuality it's not because at that age it's still about participation because they're awful. And they don't develop till after puberty and they don't develop till they're 23, 24, 25. Now we're working with the president of the American Academy of Pediatrics. We're working with this guy, Dr. Mike Maloney, and it's Tom McInerney. We're working with a Dr. Mike Maloney, who's probably the fifth or sixth best sports orthopedic surgeon in the country. We're working with Ryan Callahan, the captain of the New York Rangers, Brian Gianta, the captain of the Montreal Canadiens, Terry Grinette, women's soccer coach of the decade, NCAA Division Three. All of them say if you let them all play equally, and again, you're right, Mike, it's got to be, you know, it, it, it's never going to be exactly equal, but if you strive for that, you will find that the team itself will play better, the kids will push each other, and everybody agrees, doctors, professional athletes, coaches, that this is the way to go, but it has to be done right. Well, I, 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 let me qualify it too, VJ. I agree that if you get your bench players more playing time, it's going to help the team ultimately because uh, you never know when your starter is going to get hurt, and you need that bench player to come in and, and at least do as well as they can they may not be as good as your starter. And I think the other thing that your equation, or, and I don't know how Michigan State did that, I'd be interested to see more of that, but the, the equation, it's not an equal thing, and, and I don't think it can be from the standpoint. Uh, and I'll take my team I've got right now. I've got about five travel ball players on my team. I've got about or my six-period class, uh, maybe a little bit, maybe about seven. I've got a handful of kids that have played some rec softball, 
and I've got one or two that haven't played softball, okay? There is, there is literally no way, uh, I won't say it's impossible because there's always that kid that can prove you wrong, and I, that I agree with, but 90% of the time or more, the kid that has not played travel ball, the kid that started playing travel at 12, let's say, and played a few years of rec before that, the kid that has not played and has not done much of anything in sports is n- not going to be able to compete on an equal basis with that kid. And, and one thing I point out to my players all the time, the worst thing they can do to themselves is compare themselves to each other because that will affect their self-esteem in the wrong direction. They need to compare themselves to themselves, and are they better tomorrow than they are today? We'll talk some more. I know we're going to argue about this one. We're going to be back we after disagree. this break. <laughs> <laughs> it's in sports on the Rant Radio Network. Nurses Life Express provides unique apparel for all the hardworking nurses that wear many hats. It's apparel that expresses nurses' amazing, humorous, and caring personalities. After all, nurses are as influential as their united goal to help others. Nursing's not easy, but somebody's got to do it. For more information, please call 562-270-4312 or visit their website at www.nurselife.com www.nurselyfe.com nurseslife.com where nurses lives are expressed three balls two strikes the pitch make your team look like pros with custom lineup cards whether you are a travel team rec team all-star team or just some old guys playing slow pitch we can make your team look a little better with some custom lineup cards. For the umpire, for the opponent, for the scorekeeper, for the dugout, no matter where your lineup card goes, you will look like a big league team with your team logo and name on top of your personalized lineup card. Just visit CustomLineupCards.com. With the best prices in town, you are sure to hit a home run with us. Visit CustomLineupCards.com and go pro. Are you watching the game at home? Why? Come watch it at Mambo Grill, the hottest spot in Downey. You'll have good food, drinks, and a great time at a low price. We have the coldest beer in our sports bar, where you can enjoy the game on any of our huge flat screen TVs. And when your home team wins, you get 25% off anything in Mambo Grill. We're on Downey Avenue, one block north of Firestone, or visit us on the web. Mambo Grill, love at first bite. Hey, bro, this is a good game. You know what would make it better? What, bro? A michelada. A michelada? What's a michelada? A michelada is somewhere in the middle of a Mexican Bloody Mary and a Mexican margarita. Oh, I got you covered, bro. You got a cup in your pocket? No, sir. I got my pocket-sized michelada. Mucho macho michelada. Pocket-sized? Pocket-sized. So you can take it with you anywhere you go. Where'd you get that at? At the nearest convenience store, and you can also buy it at muchomachomichelada.com. You know what will make it better? After we get drunk, if they had a line, we can call. We can call their drunk line. You can leave a message and then log on to the site and listen to your stupidity afterwards. What's that number? It's 855-MICHE69. What's that number again? 855-MICHE69. Awesome. Mucho macho michelada. We're, we're gonna be, we're gonna keep score right now. We're, All right. We're, so, we're, so we're, what's the, what's the winning criteria here? Well, that's what we're gonna have to figure out. Coach Mike here with my co-host Alex Alanis, who is a good supporter of mine here. I, I don't want to get your credit. I want like that other guy. I want to. I'll make sure he gets. Here's about well, that. You were already giving my pink slip earlier. No, no, I did. I didn't say I was gonna get ready. <laughs> I says we were gonna add VJ to the red. Well, three instead of two. Oh, that'd be a good combination. Yeah, that'd be a good yeah. combination. Especially if he's in studio. Now I'm gonna get. He said he is gonna be out here sometime in the spring, so then we'll do two things. We'll get him on the show for one, but he can also come see my team, and we'll see uh, 
We'll see how some of these fit in now. And he'll, BJ, and, and he'll give you the winning formula. Well, I would, hey, if, if he could win, if, if we could win my league, if he changes that, he will have a bunch of uh, convert converts real quick. Because I play probably in the toughest saw, if one of the toughest, if not the toughest softball I, league in the country. I never thought I'd hear you say it, Coach Mike. What's that? Convert. Why? Because. No, you're, I'm halfway you're, to you're, what you're he pretty, believes. You're pretty solidified in your well, position. Well, I am. I've coached for many years, and and that's why I can relate to a lot. I like a lot of, a lot of the stuff vj has been saying. I've been saying in different ways. I don't have the studies to back me up. I'm just saying, hey, here's why. Number one, there's one thing that we all agree on. I know VJ agrees on, especially especially for the younger kids, but even for the high school kids, it's got to be fun. If it's not fun, why are they there? Am I right, VJ? Up. Oh. There you go, Arvin. Gosh darn it. Okay. <laughs> I didn't hear you, VJ. Go ahead. Play for fun. There you go. Now, back to our previous deal. We, we got the scoreboard up, VJ. Go through it. The idea, you, you again, you go back to the science of it. To say a 13, 14, 15, or 16-year-old girl it cannot play well as someone who has all this other training, only means that that girl has a head start because it's biology. I agree. You can't change that. I agree. So nobody gets better sitting on the bench. So in actuality, by saying you have starters, by saying you have support players, you actually predetermine the fact that these girls aren't going to be able to get better. The only way they get better is playing. What happens is the coach's ego gets involved, and he's trying to win, or she is trying to win, 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 win. And what she doesn't and he doesn't understand, and that we teach constantly, is that if you get the whole group pulling in the same direction, then you are going to have a much better chance of success down the road. Short term will always cost you. Long term, we use the tug of war analogy. No. You like you've got your team of girls, and I've got, and you pick yours, your best. And then I take the next 20. Don't care. I don't care. We do this a lot. Yeah, but uh, you choose me, whoever you want. We'll take the ahead, rest. Don't ahead. care. And we're going to have a tug of war. So you put your five best girls in the front of the tug of war, and the ones at the end of the, at the, of the rope uh, really aren't contributing that much. Well, after a while, they don't contribute at all because they know they're not feeling part of the group because as human beings, other than capital punishment, Solitary confinement is our biggest punishment. We're social creatures by nature. Now, what I do against your team for tug of war is I put my four girls that are probably not as strong as some of the others, not, and I put them right up front, and I let them earn and learn that competitive fire on their own, not with me. And, of course, you beat us in the beginning, and you probably beat us pretty handily. And I go to these girls, and I go, okay, next point for them. But it's not about the battle. It's about the war. Okay, ladies, what can we do as a group to do this better? Now, I got my better ones in the back. And wait a minute. They're getting rested. They're seeing the others play. They're getting equal time. And all of a sudden, that whole team pulling that rope starts pulling harder, Mike. And by the fifth time, your studs are all tired. Meanwhile, my weaker girls are getting better. My stronger girls are stronger. And we're having fun. And I got to tell you, Time after time, by the end of the season, not only are kids having more fun, but they're winning more games. Now, VJ, I got a dis a disagreement right there because in the tug of war, it doesn't matter which ones are up front. It matters the total strength of the whole team, not the ones up front. No, it doesn't. Do your homework. No, it doesn't. That's why you put the strong guys up front. And and then you have the anchor in the back. You still yep. have to you still have to do the same thing. I, I don't you know. Have you ever played? Like, have you ever played tug of war? Coach? Yes. Okay, if if you're if you're closer to the back of the line, okay. you're depending on the guys in front of you to be pulling harder. Thank I'm, you. I'm still depending on them, but I still if I'm not if I'm laxing off because I, I don't quite agree with what he says about the kid that's on the bench is not going to play as hard. I think part of that is coaching. Part of that is coaching because and and here I think we agree even though we disagree on this one, VJ. Part of that is coaching because that too many coaches over the years have done what VJ is describing as a model that too many have where they pay more attention to the starters and they tend to ignore the bench players. I don't do that, okay? 
I at some point there's going to be. Well, we're not we're not picking on you. Though, well, Chris. no, but no, I but I want to use it. I want to be better. Okay, I'm always looking to be better. That's why so th- I, this is your formula. This is your philosophy. I'm learning. I've I've learned I, that bench player is just as good. But in the limited time that I have, I cannot make. I can make a kid. I can make any kid better than to tomorrow than she is today if she is trying. I cannot make a kid that has never played softball, that has never had one lesson, equal to a kid that's been playing since she's seven, that's had all the lessons in a, yes, in, a, in, a, in a not in a few months. VJ, there's no way. There but is it's no not way. A few months season. This is a this is a kid's entire. Um, Adolescence, we're talking okay, about. Okay, now if you talk about from freshman year to senior year, that's a little different ball game. But well, I'm if talking not that we need different coaches. Huh? If it's not, if we're talking about anything other than a kid's journey from freshman to senior. Again, the Michigan State study, and, and again, they didn't specifically disagree with you. I want to be very clear. What they said is these kids are walking away and quitting in mass because they're not getting to play. Right. And and it, the thing is, I think that part of that part of it is how the coach would be interested to see if, and maybe they didn't go to that level, VJ. But part of that is the coaching. If if like I used to know a travel ball coach, the the gentleman passed away a few years ago. He was a real mean turkey, uh, but he, you know, as the kind of guy you'd love him to death. He, is he, he yeller. Be, he's a yeller. Oh, he could be. <laughs> he would be quiet most of the time. But if he if you got him mad. And he used that philosophy. He used the bench. And I think the best coaches do use the bench the right way. He used the bench from the standpoint that, you know, if you're not doing your job, there is somebody that will take your job. So he gives you your chance, whatever you were there first, you looked like you were the better player, whatever. If you're messing up, now you go on the bench, somebody else gets a chance, and you wait your turn to get back in there. Now, now there's that word again, Coach. What's that? Mad. We talked about this last week. We're, we're, we're talking about – the difference between being audible, kind of like the Konoski switch, yeah. right, versus getting angry at, at a play, right, at right. a particular play, and, right. and, and how, it, how it actually negates redemption. Right. You know? Um, that, it kind of goes back to what we talked about uh, uh, last week when I was talking about where does, it, where does the yelling begin, and I, and I think that's at the home, you know? I think that a lot of the, a lot of the parents uh, are... are Kind of uh, uh, teaching their kids, you know. I have six kids, VJ. I don't know if you, I don't know if you knew, if you heard the show before, but uh, me and my wife, we we go round and round about about why we shouldn't be yelling at the kids now at the home level, right? And uh, mm-hmm. my, my my whole thing, my whole thing is, is that why is she yelling? What, what what's the purpose? Well, I understand with my three year old because she's she, my three year old is just a ball of fire. That little girl just got a mind of her own. At a certain point, my wife is getting is getting to the point where she is uh, tired of saying the same thing over and over and over and over, and it becomes audible. It becomes right, more, right. and and this is where the yelling comes love. from. Because VJ, you had mentioned something earlier about you know I I don't want to paint paint coaches that are out there as being well they're just yelling just because they want to win. You know I don't think that's the case. I think that what what's happening with a lot of coaches is. They're, they're they're they've gotten to that point. It's an evolution. They they didn't start like that. They didn't start yelling at at the player for doing something. But they they're trying to teach them something, and it's almost like they're not listening sometimes, or maybe they're they're not getting there's it. There's a frustration level. Yeah, there's a frustration level where they, this is where the yelling starts to it's it begins to become something where the 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 coach now doesn't have the ability to teach, so they're using yelling as a as a as a as a, uh, a mechanism, a mechanism, yeah. okay, to uh, to get to the, to try and force their will or no, for- you want a result, you want a yeah. result. When I tell my kids, I want you to do this, and some of them do it, some of them sort of do it, some of them don't do it. Now, uh, part of it depends what it is, and I guess this is the thing you got to go back to: is what they're doing. If it's like VJ says, especially with the younger kids, if I want this kid, I want my eight-year-olds to pull off a first and third play, they can't do it. High school kids practicing over and over. It yeah, takes but, a but, lot of practice. Okay, so you're, you're practicing in practice. That's a certain play, though. Then, then, if, you, then you try to do it on well, the no, field during the game. No, I shouldn't be having it, them And do it doesn't it. happen. No, no, my point is that play, I shouldn't be having an 8-year-old learn that play. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, it's a complicated play, and the timing has to be perfect or it doesn't work. And I actually had a coach, oh, no, we do it on our, or girls, oh, no, we do it on our travel team all the time. How many times did it work? It, it's and because I had a coach 
point out to me one time, how much time do you spend practicing this play and how many times do you actually use it in a game? Yeah, and if it doesn't work, are you going to yell at them That's because, right. it, because it See, didn't work? But if, yeah. the, if, if the, where the, where the yelling maybe, is, and I'm saying maybe is justified or I can understand it more, if a player is not appearing to give effort for the normal things, just fielding a ground ball, then there's going to be a higher frustration. Then there you got to say, wait a minute, why are you not giving me an effort on that ground ball? Those are two different scenarios, and I, I think that's a little more in that what you're saying, VJ. These coaches that want these six and eight year olds to perform plays that high school kids can barely do. Right. Let's break it again. Let's break it down to its scientific and psychological fact. The equivalent of yelling at a child means it's ninety percent frustration, ninety percent for you. It's it's the equivalent. Um, and God rest my soul, my dad just passed away last year, great man. But when he would call long distance to uh, a family down in Florida, he would talk louder. Like the distance was a reason on the phone for him <laughs> to, to get through. Well, well, his day, like right now. Wait, in VJ, in his day it was. We had party lines. You might not hear very well. Well, you're talking no, through a cannon and a wire, ago. right? <laughs> What's that? Was now, that... the idea... If you really want to get through to kids, and let's just take, um, we're going to use Mike's softball team. Not picking on you, Mike. Just no, go ahead. Keep bringing them up. Go right in. Okay. Uh, Donna didn't make the double play. Oh, wait a minute, VJ. we got to take a break. So hold your thought. We'll be back in just a second and get this down. We're going to get this good. Okay. Kids in Sports, Rant Radio. We're here. We'll be back. Been in an accident? Then you need your vehicle professionally repaired. That's exactly what you get when you bring your vehicle to Greg's Auto Body Repair. Free quotes within minutes. We will provide everything you need for a hassle-free auto body repair, from an accurate estimate to working with your insurance company. We will get your vehicle to its pre-accident condition as soon as possible. Greg's Auto Body has been serving Los Angeles County and local cities since 1970. Call us at 562-789-1300. Hi, I'm Alex Alanis. And I'm Alonso Rodriguez. And, and we, we are Real Estate Rant. Rant. Every Wednesday morning between 10 and 11 a.m. here at the Towers of Rant Radio Network. No problems, just solutions. Be sure to call in with your real estate problems, rants, questions, or comments, and let us try to find you a solution. Tell us about an experience, good or bad, and finally bury the hatchet once and for all. In the world of real estate, find a fresh perspective. There's a lot more than meets the eye. Help us to ensure the public trust one rant at a time. Looking for a delicious, fresh family meal that's ready when you are and easy on your budget? Welcome to Piara Pizza. We make our pizzas with handmade dough, 100% real cheese, and tomato sauce blended with our own spices. Nothing is ever frozen. We always have large pepperoni and cheese pizzas fresh and waiting for you for only $5. Or choose one of our specialty pizzas. We have veggie, meat lovers, supreme, and Hawaiian. Add an order of our amazing hot wings, cheesy bread, or breadsticks. Our locations are ultra modern, ultra clean, and open seven days a week. Visit any one of our locations today. Or check us out on the web at www.piarapizza.com. Piara Pizza. Fresh, hot, and ready for you when you come in. Stop in for your Piara Pizza today. The Scher Foundation is the health division of the Coy Chiropractic Institute, a 501c3, 509a2 public nonprofit organization dedicated to the growth and development of the natural health care services, in particular through the chiropractic profession offering health services at the Scher clinics in the greater Los Angeles area. Your donations can help in expanding these facilities across the nation research programs, and public education, thus offering a solution to the many of the health challenges we face. 
Your donations are tax-deductible and can be sent through our website at www.sharefoundation.com. That's www.cherfoundation.com by clicking on the donation button. Thank you. Been in an accident? Then you need your vehicle professionally repaired. That's exactly what you get when you bring your vehicle to Greg's Auto Body Repair. Three quotes within minutes. We will provide everything you need for a hassle-free auto body repair, from an accurate estimate to working with your insurance company. We will get your vehicle to its pre-accident condition as soon as possible. Greg's Auto Body has been serving Los Angeles County and local cities since 1970. Call us at 562-789-1300. Coach Mike here, kids and sports. Hey, uh, you know, a lot of people out there like to make more money. They don't have time for another job. Call 1-800-905-1102. That's something new I'm doing now. Call 1-800-905-1102. Listen to the message. If it spurs something in your heart, in your mind, leave a message and I'll get back to you. And maybe well, it's an opportunity for you. Let's end the suspense, Coach. What is it? I'm not going to say. I, I like a little suspense. I've been, I've been, I do everything by the book all the time and no suspense. And i got to get out of it. Once in a while, you know. Intriguing. Is, is this the new coach that we're seeing? Well, what can I say? I will say, yes, it is multi-level. So all those that don't like that word, oh, my goodness. No, but, but it said, might you, be something You said neat. something about multi-level the other day, though. Um, Everything's multi-level. Well, exactly. I Everything's mean, multi-level. People just... There's certain people that have made that into a bad road. Like you said, you, you, the event you went to the other night, you expected one thing, and it turned out to be something else. It wasn't a, a multi-level presentation, but it sort of felt like that a little bit because they were so dominant in what they were presenting, even though they didn't go into the whole thing. But I understand, like you said, you didn't come away with a message from what it was supposed to be. Yeah. So let's get back to VJ. VJ Stanley, author of Stop the Tsunami in Youth Sports. And real quick, VJ, before we get back to our thought before the break, tell the audience what is the tsunami in youth sports? Well, the tsunami in youth sports is 70% of the kids that play by the, at the age of 10, which is the number age for participation in the world, quit by the time they're 13. The reasons they do, unlike what people want to, uh, promulgate out there is it's not having fun, too much pressure from parents and coaches, and they don't get to play. Nobody ever uh, dreamed of being Sidney Crosby with a minute to go um, with sitting on the bench. <laughs> well, and you used or an- Derek Jeter. Use another word the, the other day, genetic, genetic uh, freaks or something like that. You, well, the, I the, thought that was interesting. Some athletes are, they've developed themselves that, but they're, they're let's face it, even though some – a segment of our society would like to think we're all perfectly equal. We're not. We're all You different. can't buy talent. You can't buy talent. There's, there's, or size. You can develop your talent to be better. and That's maybe why we you, pay to watch these guys. And you'll be maybe good enough to get there. But there are some. I, I think one, even though I wasn't always a big fan, I'm more of a fan of his now than I was years ago, but John Elway. There's a guy that has just got a natural talent, you know, so there's a certain thing there. Anyway, back to where we started before the break, VJ. All right. So you have your team, and uh, Donna Donna missed a play. Okay. And again, ninety percent. I people like to say seventy five, but I like to use the ninety percent of what children learn from us is from modeling. So this Donna misses the play. Fans are yelling. Parents are yelling. Coach is upset. Everybody's upset, so she gets yelled at. Now, what we do, and if you go to my book, uh, Stop the Tsunami Youth Sports, you'll see all these anecdotes and others in there. What we did is pull the boy aside who missed the play, who got offside, and not yell at him, but in front of everybody, pulled him aside and talked quietly to him and explained to him what he did wrong for three reasons. One, you could reach him better that way. It models the behavior to the kids. Two, We're trying to put some level of doubt into people's minds as what is important to everybody out there. Ours is not being the show as a coach. Ours is getting that child to do things the right way. 
And three, nobody knows what we said to that kid. And if you don't think that works, go pull one of your players today, Mike, away from all the others, and just tell her something innocuous. And we do this in our talks. We'll just pick one guy in the audience, and I'll go to him two or three times, and I won't say anything. I'll, I'll ask him what he likes on his pizza. I'll tell him that everybody's <laughs> going to be curious about this. Uh, I'll ask him what he had for dinner last night. Invariably, by the end of my presentation, people are asking, what did you say to this guy? They probably didn't now, hear half I of what you yelled, said. <laughs> I could have yelled at everybody, and everybody would have tuned me out, just as Alex said. And when he was talking about his uh, your six kids, the mom or the dad, when they yell in frustration, of course, these are your blood. These are kids that you're having to try and teach through a 20-year journey. They're not kids playing sports on the field. Let them play. Let them have fun. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I think you, you, you probably should have a fourth category, too, VJ, on, 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 the, on the three that you mentioned. And the, and the last one is redemption. It, it, it allows... It allows them to have a second chance at doing better right. the next time. Third chance, fourth chance, fifth chance, sixth chance, seventh. Only 1% of the kids that graduated from high school played Division One sports. Only half of those played for free. These kids are all going ahead to adult leagues. Let's let them want to be active. Because 30% of the kids born after the year 2000 are headed to type 2 diabetes. And obesity has quadrupled over the four years. And we're having doctor after doctor tell us and... Uh, agreeing with the combination, these kids are quitting, and we have a responsibility to society as well as this team. And I promise you, Mike, that Donna will play better by not yelling at her and doing it quietly. Oh, I, I believe it. Matter of fact, there's times, VJ, where I'll go out to my pitcher. We're in a game, and, and we're getting struggle. You know, maybe all of a sudden uh, a couple players uh, made errors behind her or something like that. She's getting frustrated, and there's – you know, the first thing I'll do is check with my catcher. Did she hit the pitch? I wanted it pretty close to where I wanted it, et cetera, et cetera. And as long as she's, you know, looks like she's doing reasonably well, which I think I, I may not tell her anything about pitching. I'll go out there and tell her a joke. I'll go out there and ask her what do you want on pizza after the game or something like that just because I recognize and I hope every coach out there um, recognizes that you need to know the kid enough to, you know, just take the pressure off. And I love – I think it was your email newsletter, a couple things in there that I loved, or maybe it was yours that said, we're not coaching X's and O's, we're coaching Molly's and Bo's. I love that. Let's just put you guys into uh, a really tense movie theater, or, or even better, a tense traffic situation. You're the LAX, everybody, you're the, the expressway backed up, you're in a hurry, you've got to get somewhere, everything's tense, everything. Is that when you're going to drive your best? No. The object is to calm the situation down because that's when we, you, you hear every great athlete say this at some point. Hey, how'd, how'd you make that play? I don't know, man. I was in the moment. I really don't know how I did it. And that's the level we're trying to get these kids to. And the less tense they are, right. the better they will be able to perform. And relaxing them, not escalating, will always be the benefit of the child. Relax and they're, they're children. Relax muscles move quicker than tense muscles. Now, some, yes. some kids, we, and again, we do need to know the players. I actually had a player that told me on her form I filled out last year that I have the kids fill out, that, Coach, I want you to chew me out. If I'm screwing up out there, I need you to chew me out. Okay, now that doesn't mean i got to yell my head off at her, but kids, some kids do want to be treated differently. Because like Alex sort of pointed out, the redemption needs to be there. They know they screwed up. Coach doesn't have to beat them up because they screwed up. They know they screwed up. No, it's about, it's about one, do, doing it better the next time. That's right. But the one girl you yelled at, like you've coached a thousand girls. Right. And that's what people – see, they see the one girl being yelled at, and everybody does it. She's the exception that proves the rule. 999 other girls that you coach don't want to be yelled at. That's Kids right. do not want to be yelled at. Now we got to come up with some solutions here too, VJ. And I'm, two things. We got them. Two, well, two things. Well, not to all of them you have it because there's, there's. No, I'm always learning. There's, but I got a <laughs> bunch of them. There's two things. I don't even know. You know what, Mike? Not uh, only do I not have all the answers, I don't even have all the questions yet. Well, that's that's another. Here's two. I'm going to throw out at you. Number one, and I just saw an article uh, somewhere recently that uh, a college co. They were talking about this recruiting. You know, the verbalizing at 13. And by the way, 
I've been told by a few that these colleges will honor those verbals unless there's some uh, mitigating factor like grades or a severe injury or the kid quitting. Because otherwise, if, if one of them doesn't, then their credibility is ruined. And, but I whoa, actually, whoa, 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 You just said grades. That, that, that changes the whole thing. I understand. They have to go through all that high school and go to the NCAA. It's called the Clearinghouse. I know. It, it, it's easy to say, like, you know what? I'm going to take you to a beautiful dinner tonight. You, me, and Alex. I'm going to take you to the best place in town. I'm going to honor that commitment. Uh, you know what? If you don't show, though, then it's not me. Right. That's a different. That's what I'm saying. No, I, it's, I get it's that. It's a bunch of crud. But, you're, you're leading kids, not you, but they're leading kids on. And, right. and we tell people over and over again, tell me how many of these 13-year-olds, and I use Todd Marinovich over and over again, tell me how many of these 13-year-olds that were offered this actually followed through. And nobody wants to give me the data. I don't know that they've got the data. Yeah, you know why they don't have the data? They don't want the data. Well, they probably, they probably don't because they, they, all they want the data is how many that did come. They probably have that data because they know because, again, like this coach pointed out, if you offered my kid a, a verbal when he was 13, even though I, you shouldn't have, but I'm thrilled to death now. Oh, boy, my kid's going to play like the Maryland kid that's supposed to be going to SC, what, two more years now I think it is, uh, or maybe next year, I don't know. The um, If that kid does have the grades, does get through the clearinghouse, and now he comes to SC and says, okay, where's my scholarship, and they don't offer it to him, that's going to go viral and their credibility is gone. So they said there's they probably can't the violate One in a million shot you're talking about, Mike. It's Might not, it's not well, relevant to the general population. You're I talking think, the exception that proves the rule. Well, no, I think, but I think that, that one in a million, I think, is becoming five in a million, is becoming greater. And the point I want to get to, VJ, I, there was a quote from a college coach that said, I don't agree with this. I don't, we got to stop this. But until they stop, I can't stop because I'm trying to compete with them. Right, but kids don't develop fully until they're 23, 24, 25. Medically, we're talking to the, to the again, we're talking to the top medical people. And it doesn't matter what the coaches say. It doesn't matter what they do. The medical science says you cannot predict the 13-year-old's behavior. Period. I agree. So, I agree. But they're not, as long remember, as you're doing that, you're just trying to make yourself get more publicity, and that's fine. Well, I think they're too. I think they're, they're also uh, rolling the dice on the crab game that this kid – is is this size right now? He's this good right now. They're they're playing the odds that he is going to be a certain you know a certain talent level when he's nineteen. Because remember, they're not looking for twenty three year olds. They're looking for eighteen, nineteen year olds. Well, in hockey, they are twenty. The most freshmen in hockey in Division One are twenty years old. How is it? why why or how is that? Because you develop. No, no, no. <laughs> but but a freshman doesn't matter whether you're developed. That's the year you start your school. Are these kids? Are you well, saying? But we know this? a freshman at twenty is going to be, for the most part, better than a freshman at eighteen. So you're saying they're not signing up for college? No, they're going to play juniors after high school. Okay, we got to take a quick break here, and we'll be back. How many more messages? How many do we got? This is our last segment coming. Last up. segment coming up. Oh, geez, we could do a whole other show. <laughs> uh, Coach Mike, kids and sports. We'll be back. Been in an accident? Then you need your vehicle professionally repaired. That's exactly what you get when you bring your vehicle to Greg's Auto Body Repair. Three quotes within minutes. We will provide everything you need for a hassle-free auto body repair, from an accurate estimate to working with your insurance company. We will get your vehicle to its pre-accident condition as soon as possible. Greg's Auto Body has been serving Los Angeles County and local cities since 1970. Call us at 562-789-1300. Everyone, even Elvis loves Firehouse Chefs. Catch FHC Radio every Wednesday from 8 to 9 p.m. on the Rant Radio Network. 
experts know that for pastry, Baker's Bodega has it all. Exclusive brands like Westco Bankmark, Satin Ice, and Pastry Pride. One-on-one -on -one day seminars for cake decorating and gelatin art. So for our service, wide range of ingredients and supplies, and for the low prices, Baker's Bodega has it all. But you don't need to be an expert. Baker's Bodega, 7869 Paramount Boulevard in Pico Rivera. Come, we're waiting for you. Building a custom home or business is a huge deal. For some, it's the largest project they'll take on in a lifetime. Choosing your team may be the most important part of ensuring a successful building project. Starting a project by working closely with Core Design will create what's just right for your lifestyle and your property. But selecting the right builder is perhaps the most important part of creating the team. At Core Design's customer service, quality craftsmanship, and integrity are the keys to our company philosophy. Your custom construction dreams are just a phone call away. Core Design at 213-453-1609. Once again, that number is 213-453-1609. Fast two hours. Go close the door there, Alex. Coach Mike here back with you. My co-host Alex Alanese. Our guest today has been VJ Stanley. And VJ, why don't we, before we finish the last segment, because I'm sure we could do five more. We'll probably yeah. have to do another show. But go ahead and give the audience your information where they can find out what you're talking about, where you're going, your about your book, the whole bit. Well, thank you very much, Mike. Uh, it's FrozenShorts.com. The book is available an ebook. Uh, Kindle, uh, something with an app. I would have to talk to um, my daughter to know exactly, but it's available in ebook in all forms. Uh, in three weeks, it'll be out as an audio book. It's available in paperback through Amazon. Uh, we have a newsletter um, you can uh, sign up for at uh, frozenstorage.com, our website. Uh, I'm on Twitter at capital V, capital J, capital J, capital S, at VJJ Stanley. Um, we tweet about a lot of things. You can like us on Facebook at Frozen Shorts. And I appreciate very much you guys uh, giving me the forum to talk. Oh, no problem. You're making the show better today, VJ, and we're probably going to do a couple more. I, I know another coach that's back in your direction back there, Frozen Ropes. Uh, and I've had uh, Rob on my show a couple of times. That's more, more of a softball website, but he's back in your neck of woods. BJ, in addition to the college coaches that are extending these verbal offers in the hopes that they get, they want to be the first to get the best players, I think the other solution we got to get to, and, I'm, and even more so we know now based on what you said about the, uh, the hard time you have getting into the rec leagues, into the younger groups where this has to start, is to deal with the parents. And I hate to bring up a, a tragic and negative situation, but it all, my recollection of when it really started becoming drawing attention even though we know it was out there before that, especially with referees, but uh, was the tragic hockey incident back in your neck of the woods back there? Uh, what was it? Probably about ten years ago now, when the one dad uh, beat the coach up. Yep, correct. So how do, how do we get the parents to change their thinking? Because that's where it's got to start. Pure pure education. What we do in our talks, and again, it's baby steps, and. and we talked to, uh, I was uh, down to USA Hockey, had me uh, come down to Long Island to be the closing speaker for the Level 4 uh, coaches certification uh, two weekends ago. Um, and one of the, when we were done and everything went well, the, the video should be up on our website soon, is that the, the head guy came to me, Chuck Gribley, and said, you have some converts. And the whole point is the pressure of instantaneous is what gets this thing rolling and makes it to the tsunami. So what we do is continually educate only 1%. So the kids go to college, play uh, Division One. Kids don't develop until they're 23, 24, 25. The um, puberty changes everything. Uh, Tom McInerney is talking about putting our brochures in uh, all the uh, examining rooms, not the waiting rooms, but the examining rooms in the pediatric uh, places across the country. Getting everybody to understand that your kid is not the one, okay? And if he or she is, the more balanced they are, because kids that play one sport are two to eight times more likely to 
the injured. The more balanced that they are, and going back to what you said, you bring that rec player with all these travel kids, we're getting information. We're having colleges, low-level AAU people sending us information saying that these kids are uncoachable. And I promise you, the mind is just about endless and the body is finite. So more and more, <laughs> we get people to try our way. And when they do this, they have success. And again, my goal in this whole thing is lake house boat, no neighbors. And that's the whole point is if we show these kids as they get older, it's to not need us, to be able to cope, to be able to handle things. It is the journey, not the goal that's important. And we continue to show scientifically, psychologically, and back it up with data. Uh, and guys like Mike Davis and Alex have us on their show. Um, you know, we're getting interviewed all over the country. I'm going to ask to speak now. And uh, uh, we were just down in Long Island, but i got to go to Baltimore. I don't have to go to Baltimore, Hartford, uh, Chicago. And it looks like I'm going to be coming out to Los Angeles to speak. When you get out to Los Angeles, make sure you got a Tuesday morning open, and we'll bring you in studio. And then uh, that afternoon we'll go out. Well, Tuesday might be a game day. Well, that might be a better place for you to come see a, a game, depending when you get out here. It might be in season. So uh, definitely we would welcome that because uh, I, I definitely think, VJ, one thing you've done is, is uh, hopefully we've gotten you a little more attention out here, and, and but it, you make the show better. From the standpoint, I always try to bring in good content. That's why I take stories from anybody. Everybody I feel that has anything to do with youth sports has a story. Now, some of those stories might be something we learn not to do. Okay, they might. As a matter of fact, you'd love the one we had our our new sponsor, uh, Greg's Auto Body. Here, we had Greg come in the studio a couple weeks ago to introduce him, and he had an interesting story. And it, you know, I it might have his story might have happened to me. I just didn't know about it. But back in the day, when we weren't worried about self-esteem and everything so much, back in the 60s or even 50s, but he said he tried out for Little League or whatever. The coach came to his house and told his mom or dad or whatever, uh, don't bother to bring him out to play anymore because he's not good enough. He, he can't make the team. <laughs> he says he sort of blocked out. His grandmother reminded him of it, or his mom did, when he was working with his grandkids, reminding him of the story and – he sort of didn't remember it. Uh, I can't imagine but the back then that even that, that would have happened. But I wonder if that did happen to me because I did. I remember doing briefly two seasons of Little League. I don't know how many games. I couldn't tell you if I did one game or 20 games. So I don't know if something like that might have happened to me. Things are different now. Uh, we do Would get, you like a couch, uh, Coach Mike? I need a couch, yes. Yeah. I need a hug. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Christy Brinkley? No. <laughs> so, VJ, you, you, you're bringing a good thing. I, I think there's, like I said, I, I, there's a few things I, I don't necessarily challenge you on, but I do question. I mean, uh, there's some of that that I would even think about, and I understand where you're having some issues, but for most of what you're saying, you would think by now, because some of this message has been coming out, for several years now, and it's uh, some people just don't want to get it. They just don't, or maybe they're just not in the right circle because the new crowd always knows everything, so they don't always listen to the old crowd. I'm just a messenger. The truth was already there. There you go. <laughs> I actually, I have a question, VJ, because we're, we're, sure. we're coming up on the end of the show here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you can tell us, what is frozen shorts? I mean, I, why, why frozen shorts? <laughs> He's a hockey coach. <laughs> okay, I, no, I, mean, I, I got, I got that part. I got that part. No, it has nothing to do with hockey. Nothing to do with hockey. Okay. No. Um, my daughter played on a wonderful soccer team, and my wife and I always sat in the corner of uh, the games. And uh, Mom came down and said, I hear you're the gentleman writing the book. And the company was called B.J. Stanley um, Problem Solving. And she came down and she said, uh, I have a story for you. Do you mind if I sit with you? And I said, everybody's welcome here, but if you're going to yell at the kids or at the reps, uh, then we'll leave, but you can sit wherever you want. She said, no, I understand. Everybody knows who you are and what you're doing. And she said, but I have a story for you. She said, last week, and um, we took my daughter to Syracuse, which is 90 miles from Rochester, to play in a uh, lacrosse tournament. It was raining, sleet, it was horrible. Um, she didn't get to play. And I thought maybe that was something that would interest you. And at that point, I was also a professional stand-up comic, so I spent a lot of time writing in the guest room. And about 2 o'clock in the morning, um, it came to me, frozen shorts for all the kids that are sitting on the bench needlessly. 
uh, freezing their butts off. And so I went in to tell my wife, who's a special ed elementary teacher, at 2.30 in the morning, which I don't recommend anybody doing, and I waited a good nanosecond to tell her, and then Frozen Shorts was born. Well, wow. so it's metaphoric. He, when he comes to L.A., he's going to have to change the name, though, because they wouldn't know what the cold bench is. No, but the, but, <laughs> no, but the idea is it's metaphoric. It has I nothing to do with no, it being frozen. It's metaphoric, right. meaning that you're taking the bench. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. But as I say, our benches out here, are, we don't have ice on our benches. So I understand. So, so actually the message that VJ was given most of the, most of the show was uh, to have fun. Have fun. You know, uh, have. We the, agree 100% some, some, on that some of the Some of the players. Healthy. Yeah, some of the players to get out on the field more often than not. You know, that's. Uh, I don't know if Less I, is more. You can get better at your sport by not playing it. We can quantify that. Wait, 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 say that what? Well, being, he's being you facetious. You can get better at your sport by not playing it. We no, can he's not. It. No, he's not. You he's can, not being facetious. You can get better at your sport by not playing it? Yes. Correct, Alex. Explain. You need to explain yeah, that you to need, him, VJ. You, you, you lost me on that one. <laughs> the uh, United States Olympic Committee in Colorado Springs just changed their dorm rooms. They now have lowered the temperature, darkened the curtains, changed the music, and put pillow-top mattresses. They understand that when a child, even at that level, sleeps over eight hours, it releases a natural HGH. We can actually quantify by having a child rest that they then will perform. You guys know it. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. That's right. You're with your kids, Alex. you got six kids. It's, it's nonstop maniac, right? You go away for three days, you come back, you can't wait to see those kids. Oh, yeah. And that's why what Mike said earlier about the kids that have all this travel experience necessarily be better than the kids that have we're, the kids that don't. We're finding that's not true because of the mental aspect of development. So you can get better. Also, kids that play one sport are two to eight times more likely to be injured. Girls, it's worse in soccer because of the way their hips are designed and the pressure puts on the inside of their knees. Right. But you can get better at your sport by playing another sport and resting it. It gets you away from these same people. It gets you different coaches. It gets you a rest, it helps your body, it helps your growth plate, and it helps your mind. You can get better at your sport by not playing it. Oh, VJ, i got to say, it still makes the coach nervous here when he is now number one pitcher because the number one quit the first day of school because of a negative experience this summer. Hopefully we shall change your mind here. But uh, the number one now, the sophomore, is currently playing volleyball. Then she's going to play soccer before she comes out for softball. Yeah, but I yeah, the volleyball part I don't like because volleyball is absolutely an excellent sport for softball players to play. It's the soccer, Every VJ. An excellent it, sport to play. No, VJ, it's the soccer because those girls are vicious with each other, kicking <laughs> shins, kicking the knees, scratching. There's so much luck involved. Just let them play. <laughs> so, let them play. And by the way, uh, to your listeners, please, please listen to what Mike just said about his number one pitcher. Listen to what he said. He did it quietly and quickly, but he said, and I quote, with what happened during the summer, yep. the girl is playing too much softball, and you know what? Her feet are sending a message. We're going to walk away. Uh, it wasn't, unfortunately, it wasn't a matter of playing too much. It was a matter that she was on the bench and didn't get an opportunity after being recruited but for the one team. one sport. Same sport. But it wasn't, in, sport. It wasn't an injury thing. Um, Anyway, I'll, I'll tell you about that one, VJ, another time. we got to go. Thanks for being here, VJ. We will do right, another one so with much. you. We thanks, will do VJ. another one. Coach All Mike right. here, Rant Radio Network. Have a great week. Coach Mike will be back next week with Alex. Have a good day.